Hey everyone, it's Talia. I guess I'm just gonna kind of explain a little bit of to what's been going on in my life. As you can tell by the title, it is something very sad and something that I was kind of unsure about sharing, but I share a lot with you guys with my vlog videos. And I also just kind of want to say right off the bat that I know there's a lot of people out there who wouldn't share this type of information on social media. Um, this is something that they would keep private and this is something that they maybe don't feel like should be shared and to each their own. Um, for me personally, the reason that I'm sharing this is because it helps me. I've had a few like tragic things happen in my life and bottling them up and keeping them to myself for me personally is not healthy. Uh, I get into a deep and dark depression if I model things up and if I don't talk about them and I just know that talking about things and sharing things really helps me personally, it really helps me grieve and really helps me through the process and that is part of my grieving process. So I wanted to sit down and film this video to let you guys know what's been going on in my life. And I did share this news on like my personal profile on Facebook and so I that was just for like my personal context and stuff. And I was again a little apprehensive about sharing it but I know that it helps me, it's helping me through the process. And I got an overwhelming number of people responding back to me saying that they've been through similar situations, um, sharing their stories with me, like telling me that if I ever needed to talk about it, that they could con I could contact them. And it actually just really helped. It really helped to know that I wasn't alone in this situation and that a lot, actually probably more women than anybody even realizes go through something like this. So if you're the type of person who wouldn't share something like this publicly, I completely and 100% understand. Know that I'm doing it to keep you guys in the loop as to what's going on um, in case videos are lacking or in case there's content in my videos that reflects back to this and also that it it helps me. The main reason that I'm sharing this is because it helps me to talk about it. And this is also why vlog videos have been lacking on this channel, which I feel like I always have to say that because there's always something going on in my life, I swear. It's hard for me to film content for this channel and not share everything with you guys because I'm super, yeah, I share a lot. So if you guys have been keeping up with my vlog videos, then you know, Originally the plan was to start looking for a new house in the spring and then for us our timeline was once we got like settled into a new house that's when we were going to start trying for our next baby. That was kind of our plan. So and we knew that we didn't want a second baby in this house. Uh, this house that we're currently living in is for us personally a starter home and it is quite small and we just wanted something bigger whenever we had another baby. So plan was to start looking for a new house in the spring. So we found out early October that we were expecting our second baby. Um, it was unexpected. It was 100% a surprise. Uh, we weren't trying for this baby, but we weren't like not trying either. So when we found out, we were super, super excited. We welcomed the idea. We were really looking forward to it. But I had said to Steve like right off the bat, we need to look for another house because I am not moving again in my third trimester. I moved my nail studio home in when I was in my third trimester with Rose and it was just oh my god I was so freaking tired it was ridiculous and I couldn't imagine moving like an entire house when you're in your third trimester so I just didn't want that so I said we needed to start looking for another house and the timing actually turned out really good because Steve and I have been scouring for houses for like months really and the house that we ended up purchasing which if you guys watched that vlog video the house that we ended up purchasing showed up about a week after we found out that we were expecting we went to go look at it we ended up like putting in an offer a week later and we bought that house with the idea that it has um, well when the basement's done it'll have six bedrooms and there's just lots of room to grow so no matter the situation we'd have a toy room for the babies we'd have like baby would have its own nursery we would just be like all settled in that house before baby came because I was still breastfeeding Rose, I hadn't had my cycle return yet, so I had no idea when we were expecting. I kind of had a timeline just based on some personal events that had happened. I got what I thought was my period back, um, but it didn't last very long. It was only a couple days, and then about a week and a half later, I found out that we were pregnant. So, and I had taken a test shortly after that because I was like, well, this is kind of strange and it showed negative. So, but a week and a half later, I took another test and it did say positive. Um, and so I initially thought that that was like implantation is kind of what I thought. And so from that, 
Anything I had read said that implantation happens 10 days approximately after conception. So from there I went back 10 days and I kind of figured out what I thought would be my due date. So based on that, when I found out I would have been about three to four weeks along, um, I had taken one of those pregnancy tests that tell you how far along you are and it said, the first test said one to two weeks, the second test said two to three weeks. Uh, so I, I generally had an idea, but honestly I, I had no idea. So when I went to my doctor, he told me that we needed to schedule an ultrasound to see how far along I was. So that ultrasound was scheduled for about a month after I found out, which was like torture waiting because I was really looking forward to finding out how far along we were, when our due date was, all of that jazz. One of the first like symptoms that I thought I might be pregnant is I was exhausted. I was beat. I was so, so tired. I remember Steve had a day off and I was going to take the entire day and just film videos. I had like five or six videos on my plate that I wanted to film and after two, I was beat. I had like two cups of coffee and nothing was waking me up and I was like, hmm, I'm like, I wonder. And then later that night, uh, Eddie would not leave my side, my dog, he would not leave my side. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go take a test. Sure enough came back, it was positive, went to the doctor the next day to get it confirmed. His little stick test said that it was negative, uh, and so he wanted me to do a blood test. So we did a blood test, and I got the results back the following day that yes, it was pregnant. Um, I told Steve, we told our family. Um, I had no problems telling other people. I know they say to wait until you're like, you're past your first trimester, and then you can tell people, and my thinking on it is this. Had something happened like this, I was okay telling people that something had happened and then that way people would know like kind of what I'm going through and like maybe if I was a little off or whatever, people would know. And I also thought that it would be good to have those people to lean on if something did happen. So I've been of the mind that it's okay to tell people before the first trimester and even after this whole thing, I'm still of that mind. Um, I didn't want to announce it like on YouTube or on Facebook or anything yet just because I wanted to wait for that first ultrasound. And I know some of my fellow like YouTube mummy vloggers, whatever you want to call me, um, are recently pregnant and they announced it like well before their first trimester was over, which is like amazing. Like I totally get what they're, why they're doing it. And I saw these posts and I was like, you know what, maybe I will announce it. And I'm like, no, it's late. you gotta wait till your first ultrasound. Um, that way like you'll feel a little bit more comfortable. Something was just telling me, wait for your first ultrasound. And like with Rose's pregnancy, my pregnancy with Rose was textbook. Like everything that they say happens in a pregnancy happened with Rose. Um, there was no complications, there was no concerns, there was like, there was nothing. I got like the nausea the first trimester, the lots of energy second trimester, tired the third trimester, like it was just textbook. Um, and if you're having like a good healthy pregnancy where I live, they don't send you for an ultrasound until 20 weeks. And with Rose, I knew like when we had conceived as well. So there was no need for me to go for like an early dating ultrasound or anything. Just, it was just textbook. Also my first trimester with Rose, I was so sick. Like I was like nauseous all day long. I never really got throw up sick, but I was so nauseous I could barely function. If you guys were following my planner stuff, along that time my like the idea of planning made me like physically ill <laughs> that's how like sick i got and i just that actually is like what completely turned me off of like planning is the fact that i got like pregnant then and like the idea of it just like made me so sick anyway so this pregnancy felt like 100 percent different the only symptom i really had was just being tired uh i didn't have like any like boob pain which i don't think i did with rose anyway so that, that wasn't something that i was like expecting but the fact that I had no nausea did kind of concern me a little bit and I remember reading when I was pregnant with Rose that lots of nausea is a good sign is a good sign and it's a sign of a healthy pregnancy. Uh, not to say that like people who don't get nausea don't have healthy pregnancies and all of that. It's just that for me personally that was kind of what I was looking for and it just it wasn't happening. But everybody also said that like your subsequent pregnancies are all different. All pregnancies are different. So I kind of didn't give that too much concern. So we just kind of waited for that four weeks. Um, I really had no symptoms of being pregnant. I can tell you that I felt pregnant. Like the, I don't know, you can kind of feel like your, your belly almost like stretching. Like it just feels like it's kind of tight. And like, I don't think that I was showing yet, because, especially with like now knowing how far along I was and stuff. But I definitely, like, I must have been bloated or something because I had, like, a little tiny baby bump and I think it was honestly just, like, bloating because it's gone now. So, um, I definitely think I had something going on in that department and I 100% felt like I was pregnant. 
So we went for our ultrasound um, and that day freaking sucked. <laughs> Um, we were so excited. I remember the night before the ultrasound. I was like, I was super anxious. I was super nervous. I was like, what if like, what if something's wrong? Like, I don't know. I just had like kind of a strange feeling the night before. And we went for our ultrasound and I wanted to know two things. I wanted to know how far along we were and I wanted to know if there was multiples because uh, twins do run in my family and so it was something that I not really had concerns of it's just that I was just curious so those are two things that I asked the ultrasound tech and she kept saying like I can't tell you anything I can't tell you anything and she's like but if you really want to know um, I'll see if the ultrasound doctor is available and he can talk to you and I was like okay because those are the two things that I want to know so the ultrasound doctor came back in and he basically said that it was showing like I was around six weeks that there was a sack but it was irregular shaped and that there was no tadpole, no yolk sac, and basically that it was just too early to tell if this was a viable pregnancy or not. And, and my heart just dropped because I, I didn't even think that this couldn't be like an actual pregnancy. I was like, that wasn't even like a thought in my mind. And he also said that 50% of pregnancies that start like this are not viable. So our odds were already like not stacked well against us. And I mean, it's hard because in that moment I was just so like taken aback that I don't exactly remember his exact wording, but it was something along those lines. And I believe he was referring to the fact that the sac was irregular shaped. He wanted me to do a blood test with my family doctor to see how fast my HCG levels, my beta levels, whatever that's called, um, were rising. So the rest of the day after the ultrasound, Steve and I were both very upset. We had the ultrasound in the morning. Um, and my husband had taken off work to come to the ultrasound with me and the rest of the day I was just a wreck like I cried on the way home I would I think I had a client that night that I ended up rescheduling because I was just not in the right frame of mind to be around anybody like I just I didn't even think that this could be a pregnancy that wasn't viable so anyway my um, husband ended up taking the next day off uh, we were just we just weren't okay and he wanted to be there at the doctor's appointment for me and I'm very grateful that he was because it wasn't it wasn't the best news. <laughs> when we went to go see my family doctor the next day, he basically just confirmed what the ultrasound tech had said. Uh, he didn't seem overly concerned. He did tell us that when we first did the blood work to test if I was pregnant or not, that my HCG levels were low then. And so he wanted to see how they were rising. They, I believe they were at 170 when I first found I was pregnant, which could mean that I just found out super early or that there now we do know that there was problems right from the beginning. I did more blood work that day. My doctor ended up calling me that afternoon and said that my levels were at 2,700. So they had risen, but it's not where they should be for as far along as I was. Uh, the dating ultrasound did say that I was six weeks in one day, which would have made my due date uh, July 3rd, I believe. And so for that far along, your HCG levels should be higher than what mine was showing. So my doctor wanted me to come back in in about a week's time and do another blood test. Me, being like the crazy obsessive worry person that I am, was on Dr. Google, like <laughs> Googling irregular shaped sac, Googling HCG levels, and just basically stressing myself out. Anything that I had found about an irreg irregular sac led to a miscarriage. Uh, I think the very first thing that I ended up googling said that like the definition of an irregular sac is a sign of a non-viable pregnancy. Um, and then I was reading some like boards and forums and stuff of other people who were diagnosed with irregular sacs and the majority of the women ended up having a miscarriage. And I think there was there was a few that didn't like the sac rounded out and stuff but the fact that there was no tadpole that was visible on the ultrasound, the fact that there was no yolk sac, and my HCG levels being so low, everything was just adding up to the fact that I was eventually going to miscarry this baby. Um, so I guess, I guess we had warning, I guess we had, I guess we had time to prepare. I don't really think that anything can prepare you for something this crappy though. So I went back for blood work. Um, it wasn't quite a week later. It was like six days later. I went for more blood work. And so the next day I actually called my doctor because I was like impatiently waiting. Um, I called my doctor to get the results and a nurse told me that my levels had risen. I was like, what are my levels at? She's like, oh, they've risen. And I was like, okay, so is it where they should be? If you want to be pregnant, it's where they should be. And I was like, 
okay. It just seemed kind of off to me that the, just the way that she said it. And so I, I was happy again. I'm like, okay, great. Like my levels are rising. This is good. And then my doctor called me a few hours later and he said that my levels had risen to, I think it was 3,100 and something. And for a week's time, basically your HCG levels are supposed to double like every few days. So for approximately seven weeks along, I should have been like closer to the 7,000s from everything that I had found on Dr. Google. <laughs> But your levels could be like even higher than that, they could be like slightly lower and you could still be having a healthy pregnancy, but to be at 3,000 at 7 weeks, I knew wasn't good. I knew that was not a good sign. So he basically said that he wanted me to come back in a week again and we would monitor them. And I got testing done on November 15th is when I did my blood work. And then I got the results on the 16th. So on the 17th, which was the Friday, um, I started spotting. and. It was light, it was like brownish in color and everything that I had read online about having a miscarriage because now I'm googling miscarriages to try and prepare myself for the fact that I'm more than likely going to miscarry. Um, everything said that brownish was okay, it wasn't overly too much to be worried about, but anything that's bright red is a concern. Also a lot of things that I had read about a miscarriage said that a lot of women do bleed in their first trimester and go on to have healthy pregnancies. So I was trying to look at the positive, but with all of the other signs that were adding up, I was like fairly confident that I wasn't going to be able to keep this baby. It was a hard realization. So I started spotting on the Friday and then on the Saturday, I was still, I was just spotting off and on. And then on the Saturday at around like one o'clock in the afternoon, I was like heavy bleeding and I had no cramping at all. So to me, I was thinking, okay, like, Maybe things are okay. I don't know. I was I was trying to be optimistic, but at the same time, I think I think sometimes when something like this happens, like our womanly instincts, we just kind of know. <laughs> so my mom came over to watch Rose while my husband and I went to the emergency room. So we went to Emerge, and I told them like I'm about seven and a half weeks along. I'm bleeding. Um, they had asked a bunch of questions like if I was cramping, uh, if I was having like lots of heavy bleeding, which at the time I wasn't having heavy bleeding, it was just bright red and that was what was con concerning me. We waited at the emergency room for like what felt like ever, I mean I, I, wasn't, ha I wasn't an emergency patient so we waited for quite a long time and by the time we got into like the gynecology room and the doctor came in to talk to us, um, I was bleeding quite heavily where I had to get like more pads from the hospital because I was bleeding quite a bit. Doctor came in to talk to me and he said that with everything that was in my report, with the ultrasound, with the low levels of HCG, that I was more than likely miscarrying this baby. That he wanted to check my cervix to see if it was open and if my cervix was open that I was 100% having a miscarriage. Um, and then he wanted to, if it was closed, he wanted to do more blood work to see what my HCG levels were at. So he checked me and my cervix was closed. So again, I was thinking, okay, maybe things might be okay. Um, he had also said that the bleeding had slowed down. So that was also a good sign. Um, and so he, they tested my blood and it took about an hour for my blood work to come back. And the blood work showed that my HCG levels were dropping. <laughs> so I was a hundred percent miscarrying this baby. He wanted to do an ultrasound the next day to see if I had developed any further along since my previous ultrasound, but when he told me my level, my HCG levels were dropping, I 100% knew that I was having a miscarriage and it, just the realization was just, it just sucked. <laughs> I knew that I wasn't very far along in this pregnancy, but when you find out that you're going to have another baby, you just, you get attached, you, you feel like you're already another mom and... I was so looking forward to meeting this baby and it just broke my heart that it wasn't going to happen. We were supposed to go to my husband's Christmas party that night and I basically said that I just didn't, I didn't feel like leaving the house and Steve felt the exact same way. We just wanted to have a nice family night at home. We wanted to go home and we wanted to cuddle our baby that we are blessed with and that we were very thankful for. And then the next day we had to go have an ultrasound. And I didn't sleep at all that night. Like I, I knew it was inevitable that something was gonna happen and I felt like I was just waiting to bleed and I was waiting for the cramping and I was waiting for all this stuff to happen. The next day we went to the hospital to have the ultrasound. And let me just tell you, they tell you to drink like two glasses of water or whatever it is. 
they tell you to drink a bunch of water like two hours before you go and have your ultrasound I don't know what you guys but my bladder works way more quickly than that and <laughs> I did it though I listened had two big glasses of water two hours later didn't go to the washroom or anything and by the time I went in to go and have this ultrasound I was like peeing my pants it hurt so bad um, I was also like the cramping had started the bleeding was heavier so I ended up just like making a giant mess like at the hospital and it was just it was awful the whole ultrasound experience at the hospital was just terrible like my husband couldn't come in the room for that ultrasound and I knew as soon as he put like the little ultrasound thing on my belly there was no heartbeat there was no like there was no noise it was just cold and it was just an awful experience because I knew what they were taking pictures of. They were taking pictures of nothing. There was nothing going on. Baby was miscarrying. I just remember like the ultrasound tech just working away and not saying anything to me and just the tears were just like coming down my face because I it was just a really really crappy day. So after the ultrasound we had to go back to Emerge for the emergency doctor to give us the results. And by this point, I am bleeding a lot. I was bleeding a lot at the hospital. I didn't bring extra like clothes and I didn't bring extra pads and I didn't bring anything extra because I wasn't expecting it to be bleeding that much. Um, I was in quite a bit of pain because the cramping had started. The ER doctor who was on staff the next day who got the ultrasound results back said that, again, he was just confirming like you are having a miscarriage. He wanted to check my levels again just to make sure that they were going down, which they were. They had jumped to 3,000 and something at the hospital the night before. They had jumped down to 2,000 something and then even like the next day when I was at the hospital for the ultrasound, even that next day when they did my blood work again, they had dropped again. So anyway, so I am still going through this miscarriage. I am reminded every single time that I go to the washroom that I'm not pregnant anymore and <laughs> it just really really sucks so the doctor in Emerge gave me three options he gave me the option of letting my body do what it was naturally going to do or I could take a pill that would help my uterus contract and help move the miscarriage along um, or I could have a DNC and have a day procedure where they go in and basically just like scrape everything out. I chose to let my body do what it was naturally going to do. I, when it comes to your reproductive organs, I am a firm believer that your body knows what to do. This goes with like childbirth as well, but I ended up like interfering with childbirth with Rose. But I feel like the less ways you interfere with it, the better. As far as with getting a DNC, there's more complications that could ha happen down the future that might complicate things for Steve and I to have another baby down the future, and so I, that to me wasn't even an option unless I had to have it, which I didn't. The doctor said that because of how early on I was that my body would most likely miscarry itself and that would, it would do its own thing. And as far as taking the pills to speed things along, I was just, I was just fine just letting my body do what it was going to do. I trust my body and I also trust my body to know that this baby wasn't, I don't know, I guess healthy. The doctor basically just said that when you miscarry in the first trimester, typically it's because there's something going on with the chromosomes not lining up. I appreciate my body enough to respect that it knew that, but it doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> really, like literally nothing makes this any easier. After the hospital, we I had to stop at Save on Foods and get some like bigger pads because let me tell you, you need freaking huge pads when you're going, going to go through something like this. Um, and I remember as we were walking into Save on Foods, this might be TMI, but as we were walking into Save on Foods, I could feel something coming out and I basically just like ran into Save on, showed Steve what I wanted and just like left him and sat in the car. That's basically been the last few days. It's just, I feel like I can't even like walk without things happening and I'm reminded every single time I go to the washroom, I, yesterday my husband had off and I basically just like laid in bed and cried all day. I was good for like parts of the day and then I would be reminded of it a little bit more and yesterday was when I had posted something on my personal Facebook and I had had a lot of ladies messaging me and telling me their stories and it, it helps but at the same time some of the things that people say, which were all like, I had like no 
negativity which I was kind of worried about with posting something like that but I, I didn't I had so much support and so much love but some of like the really nice things that people would say just like just would tear up my heartstrings and would cause me to just be a mess again and I'm sure I'm gonna keep being a mess I know the grieving process is full of ups and downs today I'm doing a lot better my husband is off again today with me and I'm just trying to look at the good with all this uh, I'm healthy we're more than likely gonna be okay to hopefully try again for another baby when we are ready and I hope to not have any problems or complications like this in the future because this was awful and I am very sorry if there's anybody out there watching this that has had to go through something similar because I feel your pain and it freaking sucks but for all of you out there who have been messaging me and telling me your stories sharing your experiences um, all of your love and support and positive comments thank you it has helped um, it's been hard for me to respond back anything more than a thank you right now because I'm just I'm still just trying to process everything but I wanted to share this video to let you guys know what was going on in our lives for the last few weeks I love filming vlog videos for you guys and I just felt like with things that were going on I just could not get on the camera and just be like my happy chipper self because I wasn't I was terribly worried terribly nervous and honestly just waiting for the inevitable and I'm I'm I guess glad that it happened so early on in the pregnancy um, I'm glad that there was no complications with the miscarriage like I guess things went good as far as miscarriages go now my follow-up care I'm gonna go see my doctor tomorrow and I'm gonna get blood tests done again just to make sure my HCG levels are continuing to drop and I don't know what happens after that um, I'm not sure if they do another ultrasound to make sure that everything is out I'm not too sure what happens from here but I wanted to share the story with you guys because it helps me I wanted to keep you in the loop as to what was going on in my life and yeah in case content is lacking or is of a different nature in the next little bit anyway hopefully my next video is a little bit more chipper I'm not sure when my next vlog video will be up um, but I'll see you guys in it